These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. That address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype, um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, one more thing that is available at my website is a document um, that I've prepared uh, that uh, summarizes a lot of the concepts that are covered in uh, this video. <clears throat> a, a document that covers a lot of the concepts behind uh, rotational motion. Uh, so again, you can uh, go to my website at this address. You can just use the link in the info box. Uh, and you can find a printable, uh, a printable PDF document uh, that you can use to help you uh, in, your, your, in your studies for rotational motion. Uh, that would be a good document, I think, to actually go to my website right now and print out and have in front of you while you're going through uh, this series of videos. Uh, so again, I'd recommend going to my website uh, and uh, printing out the document uh, that I prepared that goes along with this series of videos. And if you have that out in front of you during the videos, I think uh, that might help you uh, in learning the material. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm realizing that uh, I actually uh, referred to that uh, document that I mentioned uh, quite a bit in this tutoring session. It's, it's going to be pretty difficult for you to follow along with the session unless you have that in front of you. Uh, I, I, I call it a handout. So I, I definitely strongly recommend uh, that before you watch the rest of the tutoring session, you should go to my website and uh, print out the document that has the handout that I'll be referring to uh, in this tutoring session so that uh, when I'm referring to the handout during the tutoring session, uh, you'll be able to follow along with that uh, uh, on your own that has uh, the step-by-step -step methods that we're going to be using uh, in, in, uh, during, the, during the tutoring session. So it'll be very helpful uh, to you for following along with the video if you go to the site and print out that document now before you watch the rest of the video. Okay. Yeah. All right. So again, uh, now I understand the situation better. So we have a 200 kilogram sign that's hanging from this 50 kilogram boom, right? Mm -hmm. And the boom is attached to the wall on the left, and it's also supported by this rope. And again, the key thing is this is a statics problem. The question is, how big does the tension in the rope have to be to keep the whole apparatus static. How big does the tension have to be to keep the whole thing from moving? So we don't want the thing to move. So we're going to identify the object or objects. Well, we've talked previously okay. about how the things with masses are the things that we treat as objects. The things okay. with masses are the things that we're going to treat as objects. And now, something we haven't talked about is, for a statics problem, you should treat all the masses as one combined object. For a statics problem, you should treat all the masses as one combined object. So we're going to treat the boom and the sign together. This is the boom. And here's the sign. Here's the wall. Here's the rope. We're going to treat the boom and the sign together as one combined object. Uh, okay. Now, what are the things that are not part of this object? What are the things that are external to this object? Well, the wall is external because we didn't uh, say what the mass of the wall is, and the rope is external, because we weren't given the, the mass of the rope. So we should treat the internal object as the boom and the sign. Those are the things we were given the masses of. So we'll treat this okay. as if there's only one object with two parts, a 50 kilogram part and a 200 kilogram part. All right, okay. so those are our objects. And now we need to identify all the forces, all the external forces on that combined object all the external okay. forces on that combined object. So you tell me, wh wh what's one of the external forces on that combined object? Uh, one of the external forces on the, on the, the combined object would be the, um, the normal force. From whom? The, the force normal or the normal force going... Yeah. And who's, yeah. who is exerting that normal force? A normal force from whom? Oh, the... I forgot. <laughs> Oh, from the 200 gram? No, no, no. 
No. Now remember yeah, we yeah, don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Remember that we weight. don't. Oh, go ahead. Mm hmm Okay. Now remember that we want we don't want to think about the forces that are coming from the combined object. We only want the forces that okay. are being exerted on the object. In a free body diagram, you're only supposed to put the forces on the object. Um, okay. So I think, Minda, you were talking about the force from the 200 kilogram object on the 50 kilogram object. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But there's two reasons we don't want to focus on that. Again, we don't want the forces on. Uh, we don't want the forces that are being exerted by the object. Only the ones that are on it. And also, we don't want the forces that these two objects are exerted on each other because that would be internal. We only want the forces that are coming from external. So we don't need to worry about the force that the 50 kilogram object is exerting on the 200. And we don't need to worry about the force that the 200 is exerting on the 50, because those are internal to the combined object. Those are going to cancel out. Whatever force the 200 kilogram object is exerting on the 50, that would just be canceled by the force that the 50 kilogram object exerts on the 200, uh, because okay. of Newton's third law. So we want the okay. forces that are coming from external. Right, right. So I think okay. Leah mentioned the weights. So um, yeah. for example, there's the weight of the 50 kilogram beam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, now remember that since we're dealing now with rotation, we have to know what the point of application of every force is. So what's going to be the point of application of the force of the weight of the 50 kilogram beam? In the center. The center. Right. I think we mm -hmm. talked about that previously. Uh, the point of application of the weight is the center of mass. Right. The point of application of the weight is the center of mass. Well, we can assume that for this object, the center of mass is just in the center. So I'll draw that weight over here. So that's that weight. We can call that uh, the weight uh, of the beam. WB for the weight of the beam. Uh, and as long as we're that? there, we might as well calculate that. How can we calculate the weight of the beam? It's negative 1960. You, you uh, multiply it by 9.8. So tell me what calculation you did again. 200 times 9.8. Ah, now that That's would be the, the weight, weight of the sign. sign. That's the weight of the sign. Oh, what so did you ask for? Oh, the boom? Okay, it's 490. Two. There we go. Yeah, 490, okay. yeah. So we have that weight as uh, 490. Uh. All right, so yeah. um, let's see. Uh, all right, we got the weight. Uh, so uh, the weight of the beam is 490 newtons. And uh, <coughs> we also have the weight of the sine, which was... What did you get for that? The weight of the sine is negative, or well, 1960, 1960 newtons. Good. Now, where is that weight being applied? What's the point of application of that force? The center of, to the 200 gram yeah, kilogram mass. Yeah, the center of that sine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and erase the 200 here then, so I have some room. So that would be applied over here. So that's the weight of the sine, 1960 newtons. All right. Now, uh, any other forces besides those two weights? Any other external forces on this object? Oh, before you... Oh, well. Mm -hmm. you, no, said, like, no. you said to ignore the wall and and the rope. Force. Now let me clarify that. Uh, we don't want okay. to ignore them. We just don't want to treat them as the object. We want to treat them as external to the object. Uh, and external. the reason that's important is, remember, we don't want to worry about any forces that one part of the object is exerting on the other part of the object, because those would be internal. We don't want to worry about the force that the boom exerts on the sign or the force that the sign exerts on the boom. Those are internal Force's and they the would boom. just cancel uh -huh. each other out. Okay. We only want to uh, worry about the things that are external. For example, where are these weight forces coming from? Who's exerting the weight forces? Well, those are coming from the Earth, right? It's the Earth right. that's exerting the those gravity. forces. Yeah. Well, that's right. definitely external to this combined object. Okay. So those are the types of forces okay. we want to take into account. Well, who else is external? Okay. Remember, how do you find all the forces on an object? Well, first of all, everything has a weight, which we've taken into account. Mm -hmm. And then you ask, yeah. what's touching the object? You ask, um, what, what, what oh. external things <laughs> are touching the object? Yeah. Well, one thing that's There's touching... Gonna... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, so the, the, the tension that on that rope... That's right. The rope is also force. touching it. And remember right. we said we were going to treat the rope as external to the combined object because the rope didn't right. have a mass. Right. doesn't mean we're ignoring the rope. It's very important. It's just okay. one of the things that's exerting okay. the forces, not feeling the forces. So we have that tension force. Okay. Now, what direction okay. is the tension force in? 
Well, we should know that tension forces are always exerted along the rope. So I can draw this arrow here to show the direction of that tension force. This tension force is being exerted along the rope, like that. So that would be okay. the direction of that tension force. And then finally, there's one more thing that's touching the object, which is the wall. But let, let's be a little bit more precise about that. Um, it, would, would, the, would the boom just be resting on the wall, or would it be attached to the wall? It's attached to the wall as well, because the boom is attached to the... Just based on our common sense, if, if we were setting up yeah, an apparatus here to support a sign, we wouldn't want to just rest right. this beam on the wall. That wouldn't hold it in place. Right. We would attach it right. by a it's hinge. Attached to the wall.